thank you. Uh, oh, driver, they're holding some theater tickets for us at the Governor Clinton. Would you drive by there and pick them up, please? Glad to, sir. What's this, driver? Compliments of Blue Book Livery Service, sir. Uh, yes, I've heard about that. Well, thank you. Real elegant, sir. Very nice. Yeah, would you mind returning the courtesy? Did your office tell you about our plans for tomorrow? Yes, sir. I'm to hold this car in reserve until I hear from you. Exactly. Oh, uh, take good care of it, huh? Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. and put a little sauce on it. We got a plane to catch. business trip, and if this thing gets to trial, I'd have to come back. Well, if it ever gets out, I, I mean, isn't there any other way? Mr. Sampson, we've had these clubs under surveillance for a long time. Now, you came waltzing in here, you made a complaint that you'd been taken for $200. Well, that's true. But we can't help you unless you help us. And in this town, you can't make a complaint by absentee ballot. <laughs>
Samson, if you just tell us which one of these girls joined you at the bar, please. Well, I... Will you tell us if any of the ladies were in the bar when you came in? We know they all work there, Mr. Samson. unless you cooperate. Pardon? I can't make an arrest. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just can't risk it. You like your smut and neat little disposable boxes, don't you? You like to blow into town, pick it off the shelf, and stuff yourself, and then blow out again, don't you? Well, go home, Mr. Sampson. All right, ladies, you can go. Crackdown going, officer. Now Mr. Samson goes home and tells all his neighbors what a pit of corruption we are. Hawk. When? Where? All right, I'm on my way. You know a brokerage house named Keel Keel and Mulligan? No. No, he just got robbed. How much? One million dollars in negotiable security. Or something? No, 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 that's fine. Thank you. Oh, is this what they use? Oh, I'm sorry, officer. Oh, you poor girl. Oh, well, they were very good about it, really. They were very serious, but very good. I didn't feel a thing. Oh, uh, just... Mrs. Neary, are, are you all right? They just tied her up like a sack of rags and, and, and just left her there. I know. You've had your share. Uh, I would like to make a statement now, and you may take it as the firm's official communique. All right. We have discovered that a number of securities are apparently missing, and we would like to advise all those who are involved with us. By that you mean your customers? Yes, we wish to put them under advisement that in view of our overall insurance, our loss, if indeed there is any loss, is minimal. And in fact, uh, no damage whatsoever will accrue to this firm. The actual value of the securities involved is uh, one million dollars. And uh, your name, sir? Reed Mulligan. We are also working in vigorous association with the police. Well, Mr. Mulligan, I'm sure the reporters outside will be very interested in that. Thank you. Oh, but I, I thought, uh, well, who, uh, who are you? Well, I'm a member of that uh, vigorous association. Hello, Hawk. Hello, Bill. This is Miss Cindy Olmstead, head bookkeeper for the firm. This is John Hawk, Miss Olmstead, of our detective squad. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Olmstead? How's your morale? 
That's good. They were gentlemen, I must say. Well, uh, how many gentlemen were there? Two. You all alone? Yes. The door was open? Yes. Why? I was uh, expecting Mrs. Neary, the uh, cleaning lady. Is that the lady that found you? Yes, yes. Well, you must have seen the two gentlemen when they came to the door, then. No, I was in the vault, or I just stepped in the vault to record some serial numbers, and when I turned around, there they were. And? We have to grind this all out again, Mr. Hawk. Is that it? I'm sorry, I guess I'm a bit testy, but I've been here since early morning. Why is that? Uh, well, let's start at the beginning. Uh, what they took was a big new shipment of securities, very hush-hush, brought over by courier with AAA clearance for privilege investors only. Well, it came in this afternoon, and it all had to be recorded and entered before the exchange opens tomorrow morning. And that's what you were doing in the vault? That's what I started to do, yes. When they walked in? Yes. So the securities are still in a street name? Yes, they are. Which makes them highly negotiable? Highly. Ms. Olmstead, who knew about the securities? Well, of course, the brothers Keel and Mr. Mulligan and, uh... Yes. Myself. And the insurance people. Are we working on the theory of an inside job now, Mr. Hawk? Well, it'd make a great movie, wouldn't it? Started a flight up to Connecticut. Here we are. Oh, yes, sir. Good expecting you. Uh, the pilot just called. Said he'll be here in about, oh, ten minutes or so, right out there. All right. We'll wait outside. Genius is, Dick. Genius is the ability to see the obvious. This whole thing was so obvious. And you saw it. Yeah. John's genius. We all know that. Hey, let's do the catechism. So oh, cut it out. Come on, come on. It'll kill a little time. What is the technique we use? We make use of the innocent bystander. Why? To minimize the handling of merchandise. Why? In case of accident or uh, negative development, the merchandise is found on the property of Blue Book livery, suspiciously concealed. Result? Blue Book is left holding the bag. Why the livery service? To get the merchandise across the state lines to the disposal point. Further attraction. It's loaded with class. Go on, go back to work. It's all yours, Hawk. There are no federal violations, they think. They want us to initiate investigation. 
and they'll lend us every possible assistance. Any ideas? Uh, any ideas here, Doctor? About what? Oh, we're breathing down their necks. Poor crooks. The uh, FBI will lend us every possible assistance here, Doctor. Well, we could do worse. How? How? No fingerprints. Negative lab report. And a two-bit common backyard variety clothesline. Unremarkable in every way. Except for small traces of saline absorption. Proving that the victim, wrapped in said rope, with uh, tape across the mouth, perspired. Zero, just like tape. Except for pancake base, powder, and lip rouge. Proving that the victim has unnecessary worries, because she's very attractive. I gotta move. Why? Motion is motion, even if it slams you into a tree. I know. It's an old Iroquois axiom. Well, I have gotten over it yet, officer. I don't think I ever will. Can't you put on some extra guards or something? Well, it would have helped if she'd have kept the door closed. Yeah, I suppose so. She claims she was waiting for you. Well, I come around about the same time every night. We got our work laid out, you know. I take it she's in the habit of uh, keeping the door open for you. Well, let's say, fumbling for keys and everything. She works late quite often. Yes, poor thing. Sometimes I think she's married to this job. Mrs. Neri, how many rooms do you clean at night? Nine of my own, and the three extra ones on Friday when I'm on relief. People working late and all of them? Most of them, most of the time. Uh, women? Um, yeah, the majority, especially around tax time. And they all leave their doors open, waiting for you. Well, um, I never noticed. Mrs. Neri, it's a crime to withhold information from the police. Did you know that? I don't have any information, officer. I don't think it's right for you to say that. Well, do they leave their doors open, or don't they? Well, now, I'll have to think about that. All right. You think about that. Well, now that I think about it, I guess most of them don't bother. But that's only because they're not lucky enough to have a young man coming by to pick them up and take them home like she does. But that's why she left the door open, mostly for him. He's a very nice young man. Who was he? I don't know. Will you pick her up tonight? I don't know. Listen, if you think that girl had anything to do with this business, you certainly got a lot to learn. Calamity in the six he's minutes. He's still late. He's getting paid for holding up his end of it, isn't he? Why is he late? You want to know one thing? I'm going to be jumping for joy when this thing's over. You know that? I'm going to shake you, buddy. <laughs> you and your whining and your poor mouth belly aching. He's still late. He's your connection, and you keep telling me for the past two weeks how reliable he is, and he's late. You better start worrying about pulling your own weight. Make the call, Nick. Hey, there he is. I don't even know this guy, and we put an awful lot of time into this. And right now is when it begins to count. Look, I've been doing your brain work for 10 years. Don't start rearranging the furniture. Hmm? He's fine, I tell you. He's perfect. Now, the limousine gets here at 1 o'clock, right? Now, how do we get the driver away from the car? I slip him a deuce to help load and fuel the plane. We get in the car. We get the merchandise. Hand it over to Greg. We say our goodbyes. He gets back in the plane and takes off. We have a nice car ride back to New York. Now you're talking, buddy. Hey! Hey, Greg! How you doing, buddy? Great, this is great. Why, it's good to see an old buddy moving into a higher bracket. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be Dick Olmstead. Yeah, how are you? Great, great. Everything all set on this end? All set. Let's go over it again, Greg. Okay. Here we are here. As soon as I get the merchandise, I'll fly so. In a couple hours, depending on headwinds, I'll touch down right here, at a small private field outside Toronto. I turn the merchandise over to Mr. and Mrs. X, and they drive back into Toronto and take an unscheduled overseas flight to Switzerland. <laughs> 
Two-week vacation, second honeymoon, very happy occasion. They deposit the merchandise in a numbered account in a Swiss bank, mail the letters of credit back to me. Three of us meet back in New York for the payoff. This Mr. and Mrs. X, who are they? That's none of your business. Hey, Dick, you make the call yet? You will make the call. I just want to know who they are. Look, all you got to know is that Greg gets 10% of the cash in. Who they are and what their bite is has nothing to do with us. All right, all right. I think there's a lot of mileage between uh, here and Switzerland. What's with him? He never got over being somebody's baby brother. Ah, don't worry, he's all right. Uh, this is, uh... This is Mr. Watkins in Connecticut. You have a limousine waiting for us. I'd like it to pick us up here at one o'clock. It was what? No, wait, wait a minute. No, 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 hold on a minute. No, wait. What is it? Hold it, please. Hello. Would you repeat that, please? I'm sorry, but the car you reserved has been stolen. Uh, what is your address in Connecticut, sir? We'll have another car up there immediately. Hello? Hello? Uh. We better get back to New York. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Beck. Yes, yes, this is Cindy. Uh, has uh, Dick come home yet? I see. Well, w would you tell him that I've been trying to reach him all day and, uh, could he meet me at my house later? Thank you. said I didn't mean to frighten you. I suppose this comes under the uh, heading of, of reenacting the crime. I said I'm sorry. And now you're going to tell me that uh, just about the dumbest thing that I could have done last night was walk into this vault with that door open. Well, as a matter of fact, it wasn't... Oh, please, Mr. Hawk! I am the head of a department! I get a very good salary for doing a job that requires an extraordinary amount of work. You know, I work late because I enjoy working late. I am not a poor, defenseless female that, 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 that sees menace lurking behind every... Now, what is this about doors? I mean, really, who cares about doors? Well, I would think the firm would have some small interest in it, considering I what happened last night. I am a very busy night. girl, Mr. Hawk. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. What is it? What is it that you want? Well, for one thing, you never did give us a complete description of those two armed gentlemen. Well, they wore rubber masks, full rubber masks that covered their whole heads. Uh-huh. Well, was one short, one tall, one fat, one thin. What kind of clothes were they wearing? One have a suit, uh, one have a jacket, one have a coat. What about their voices? Did you notice anything unusual about their voices? Did one of them have an accent? What about their shoes? Did one of them limp? Did they seem slow or were they fast? Did they seem nervous or were they sure of themselves? Who is he, Miss Olmstead? Who's who? That young man that picks you up at night. It's a friend. How long have you known him? A long time. Did he show up last night? No, Did he show up last I night? No, Mr. Well, then who Mulligan. took you home? Mr. Mulligan. Well, the attendant downstairs said he didn't show up last night, and it doesn't look like he's going to Tell me, Mr. Hawk, is this a sample of police harassment that I'm always reading about? Well, I don't think you have a case for the Civil Liberties Union just yet, Ms. Olmstead. Not just yet. As a matter of fact, he might show up tonight. So I think I'll just wait for him. Full of surprise. 
surprises, right? Oh, you said it. How long have we been iced in cars, Yes. Two, three years? You ever come across anything like this? I don't get this. Use your head. It's an old game. A thief using a thief. Yeah? Look, a nice, clean-cut young man comes in and gives us an order. Steal him a car. Like this. Not only like this, but this car and no other. Well, so what? So, he's very smooth, he's very definite on the car he wants, right? Right. He gives us the exact time and place where the car will be. Saves us a lot of running around, right? Right. So he goes to work, and he rents the car he wants us to heist. He pulls off this Wall Street job, buries the loot, we glum the car off the streets, right? We work it over, give it to him, and he winds up with the whole pot. But I can't figure why he brought us into it. It's got to be a cross. Who's doing what to whom? Yeah, the paper says two guys pulled his job. They don't know it. But they got themselves a brand new partner. Stolen last night. The chauffeur wasn't on tonight. I didn't wait around for that bum to show. It's him, all right. He saw us hide the briefcase. He rigged the car theft to get it. <laughs> He's going to get it, all right. Hello, Doc. Hello, Honk. What are you, the only cop left in New York? Yeah, pretty soon they're going to have me over in traffic covering uh, parking meters. I was an innocent bystander. For an innocent bystander, he sure knew how to blow a hole in himself. Are there any close range powder burns? I can't tell you. They've got to take a few seconds. Tell me something, Doc. When's the last time you saw a suicide land on its back that way? A uh, long time ago, when I was young and foolish and thought this lousy job was a step in the right direction. That's what I thought. Paul? Oh. Hello, Carter. That attendant at Keel Keel and Mulligan? Uh-huh. He also doubles as a porter. Yeah? Well, so every night, between 8.30 and 8.45, he leaves the front lobby and goes downstairs to the basement where the lockers are and changes uniforms. Mm-hmm. Well, anybody who's hip to the routine can walk in and out of there without being noticed. Yeah, I guess so. It's not a hybrid. It's not a wood flower, not American, not wild. It's Heather. Well, it might be Heather. Check it out. Harry Miller over at the Flower Association, he'll give you the dope on it. You want to know who's importing the species into the city and where it's being distributed? Right. Carter, you better get a search warrant in case Cindy Olmstead's not home.
It's all set. door shut. Cindy. Hello, oh, Mrs. Beck. This is Dick Olmstead. Is my sister there? Oh, she's on her way back. the security so it was a confidence stick you used me. That was the idea. But do you know how ugly that is? Not half as ugly as living under your thumb. You think it was a great joy having you there? Dick, please! I want to help you. Doing your help. You're in trouble. Trouble? I'm wife's original dropout. That's the way you always saw me, you and that illustrious father of ours. Hey, every time I called you a wife for help, how come you're always there with a flash with a fistful of dough? That's what you wanted. No, that's what you wanted. How come you never once said no because you enjoyed playing safe? And why couldn't you tell me? Because I was looking for one chance to pay you back every cent you ever gave me. But get off my Dick, back. Dick, please, wait, I want to help you. Oh, whose car is this? All right, it's pretty sweet, huh? Why don't you give me the securities and we'll, we'll drive out to Long Island and we'll see Mr. Mulligan. Yes, ma'am. You got anything in lately on a limousine heist? Yeah, it's the wildest thing, too. What is it? 
An outfit called Blue Book Livery Service reported the theft of a silver limousine carrier last night. And here's the wild part. Remember that flower you asked me to run down? Yeah. There's only one distributor who flies it in fresh from England three times a week. And he sells it to four regular customers. An art gallery, an east side restaurant, a private hospital, and Blue Book Livery. Huh? Huh? You still on? Did you say that 1036 was silver? Yeah. Oh, uh, there's something else I forgot. On the DOA, with the suicide note, BME says that there were no close-range powder burns. So he concludes from the position of the body that it was a homicide. Carter, pick up the chauffeur of that stolen limousine and take him over to Bellevue and see if he can identify the homicide. Right. Where are you taking me? To see how a uh, dropout winds up head of the whole school. Just sit tight and relax. Just stop the car, will you? Look, shut up, you idiot. Just shut up. South on 7th Avenue, license number It wouldn't have worked because we've got a tail on your brother right now. I didn't know. You never stop fixing things for him, do you? Oh, come on. And put me on relay. When my father died, he left a little money. He and Dick despised each other. So he left it all in trust to me to punish Dick. And this whole fantastic scheme of his is Dick's way of punishing me. He turned east on 24th and south on 2nd Avenue. We picked him up at 14th Street. He turned west on 9th, came around the block twice. He just pulled up to a parking garage between 2nd and 3rd on 9th. All right, I'm on my way. Send a couple of cars over there for college support. Don't hurt him. Back and forth, trying to make his mind up. He just went up. You see you? No, no, we laid back until he went in. All right, you cover the door. All right, and you stay here. I'm coming with you. My problems you don't fix. You stay here.
fight it. Now, right now, I'm running the same risk you are. That's got to cost you, friend. But the stuff's no good, you know. I can cash it in, and you can't. Uh, I got a bum reputation, but I know what negotiable means. Look, I tell you, I got no time. Now, let me find out what they're worth, and I'll bring you your share. No good. How did you ever figure you could use an operation like mine as a goat? You made a mistake, but I like your style. Oh, using blue book livery here, that's sharp. That's sharp. You, uh, figure my share is this much? 10,000. Hey, you gonna shut five men up with peanuts? Hey, he's a comedian! Look, you're locked into us, kid. I mean, you got no choice. 50-50. Chauffeur made a positive identification on the homicide. Yeah. Man's name is Cheever, and he says that there's another man in on it too. There was another man in on it. 